Welcome back internet. So I've been intrigued by the idea of XFCE 4.14. As a desktop environment, it's really, really functional. And if you've been watching some of the videos on my channel over the last few weeks, uh, I, I looked into XFCE 4.14 as a release and looked at some of the new stuff that was going on there. And then I also compared two distributions that have XFCE as, as one of their primary desktop environments. Um, but I have this thought, what if XFCE actually looked good? And uh, so a while back, probably back in May or June, uh, this particular distribution, Enso OS, uh, was, was uh, they had a new release. Now, it's, <laughs> it's very easy to put this in the category of yet another Ubuntu release, and like it kind of is. So that's why I'm not sort of focusing this video specifically on Enso OS, but I'm using it to kind of address a, a really interesting idea, to me anyway. And that is, what if XFCE actually looked good? Speaking of looking good, I've got some exciting news for this channel. I'm going to be building a website to go along with it, with the help of today's sponsor, Hostinger. Check out the link in the description for up to 91% off yearly web hosting plans on Hostinger.com and stay tuned to the end of the video for some more details. Let's get on with the spuds. Okie doke. So here we are running in Enso OS. Now, like I said at the top, I'm using this as a bit of an example. Um, so XFCE, it's really, really functional. It's got a lot going on. And as each release matures, it seems to have more and more uh, settings to be able to do the things that most people want to do with a graphical user interface. Now couple this with some wild performance and especially performance from all kinds of hardware, whether it's old, uh, whether it's you know modern hardware, you can eke some amazing performance out of XFCE. Uh, but the question remains, by default, XFCE kind of looks pretty dated and I feel like it does a disservice to, to how good this desktop environment actually is. And, uh, and Enso OS couples the Gala window manager from one of probably the best designed in terms of looks, uh, Linux distribution projects out there, Elementary OS, it takes the window manager from Elementary OS and couples it with the desktop environment of XFCE. And what you get is something that is very lightweight, very performant, uh, but it actually looks and feels quite nice to use as well. Okay, so here's, and again, I'm using this as a case study. So, you know, definitely go check out this distribution if you're curious about this combination. But the reason that I'm using this one is because I think this combo of the Gala Window Manager, something that is smooth, something that has very nice, uh, very nice fixes to common problems like screen tearing and that kind of thing, consistently across the board, I've always gotten wickedly smooth animations from Gala as a window manager, as opposed to pretty much any other window manager out there. What Enso OS does is it combines the smoothness of the windows, the animations, the notifications, all that kind of thing with the core desktop environment of XFCE. And what this means is you get function and you get the, uh, the pizzazz. I'm all about the pizzazz, but quite often we end up sacrificing one or the other in the Linux world. Um, so, and I, I guess it kind of launches into a wider discussion around this idea of, you know, what do we actually want out of our Linux distributions? Why do we use it? For me personally, I love the fact that we can customize it to look however the heck we want. What boggles my mind though, is that even though we can make it look however we want to make it look, by default, so many Linux distributions look pretty average out of the box. And especially once you start considering the distributions that ship with XFCE by default, and uh, it really starts to narrow down the pool. So first of all, let's get some suggestions on the board for, uh, for some distributions that I think look okay with an XFCE desktop environment. Uh, so first of all, we have Voyager uh, Linux. Voyager Linux is a French distribution, I believe, um, that is both Ubuntu based, but they also have a Debian version that's based on Debian 10 Buster. And, uh, and basically Voyager has been around for a while. I actually got some really old videos uh, on the channel from Voyager back in the day, and it's been ages since I've done a video on them, but they have an XFCE edition that I think looks pretty nice. Um, and if the whole Mac layout thing is not for you, and uh, you're not really into that, you've got sort of the more slightly more traditional uh, layout and you've got Linux Lite, 
Uh, Linux Lite is a is quite a well polished, uh, user friendly XFCE based uh, Ubuntu based. Here we go again, uh, distribution. But the the default look and feel of the desktop with Linux Lite is is mm, it's it's a seven out of ten. I don't know. It's it's clean, but I wouldn't say it's profoundly modern by any stretch. Uh, I'll pull up a video here just so you can get a quick idea for what we're dealing with. See if it can deal with this. I'm um, I'm levels deep here. We've got an oh we've got a VM running. We've got Flash Player. So as you can see. It's, uh, it's just got the menu bar down the bottom here and uh, a fairly standard desktop layout, but at least the icon set and the theming does look relatively flat and modern. Oh, it's me from the future. The other recommendation I had if you wanted like a really nicely modern themed distribution would be uh, Zorin OS Lite. However, we're still waiting for the Zorin OS Lite 15 release, which is based on yet again Ubuntu. Guys, let me know, if, are there any other relatively modern looking uh, XFCE desktops that actually look nice? I'm really struggling outside of Ubuntu and Debian based. Um, anyway, shout out to Yon Lopez for this footage um, of Zorin OS Lite 12.4, cause it's really hard to find. Anyway, moving on. Now, why I am using Enso is because, uh, again, those animations are something that I really find lacking in XFCE as a whole. Unless you pair it with something like Compiz, um, usually the animation side of things is, is pretty lame uh, on XFCE by default. So with Gala, you get those really smooth fade in, fade outs, and I don't know how well you, the, the recording is picking this up, but uh, and also the other thing is, is that I am a bit of a sucker for the idea of the panel of icons or the dock of icons down the bottom and global menus. I've always loved global menus and I don't even know why. It's just a consistent muscle memory for me. I haven't even used Macs that much. So it's only been since I've been using Linux that I've really liked global menus. So again, this the example that I'm using is very, very personal to me. But the fact remains that I think with the infinite customization options of the Linux desktop, I feel like there should be some better options out there when it comes to how these things look. Uh, which is why if you have a bit more RAM to spare uh, and maybe a little bit more processing power, it is very hard to overlook uh, the work that the elementary team are doing. Um, now I bring elementary into the picture because they uh, because Enso OS this particular OS that we're looking at here borrows a fair bit from that particular project and just borrowing from the stuff on their blog really quickly they've integrated the obviously the app center like I said before from the elementary project or rather forked it from app center um, they've got the greeter so login logout manager from uh, from elementary as well which is schmick uh, and they've also got plank like I mentioned and they also borrow the wallpaper changing mechanism as well. But when it comes to things like window management, switching these window layouts, jumping through multiple desktops, there's just, there's something about Gala that is, uh, that just makes me want to gush. Every piece feels like it belongs, but the consistent performance of Gala is obviously credit to the elementary team and, and, uh, and the people behind the Gala window manager, but combining that with how lightweight XFCE is. So if we pull up the task manager here, as you can see, we're barely using any CPU whatsoever. And we're using about 20% of, I think four gig, I'm pretty sure is what I gave it. So it's not using a whole lot of RAM. We're definitely under a gig. And when we're able to borrow from some of the other kind of lightweight stuff that the elementary team is doing, such as the app store, uh, they have a fork of the app store that they're calling the app hive. And they also use similar settings panels uh, from the elementary team as well to change things like the wallpapers, the dock and the launcher because they are kind of based around uh, the Gala window manager and their desktop and their respective desktop environments. Now, I wanna make it clear that Enso OS as a project, I believe is still very much in beta. Uh, they're still adding things to it and uh, playing around with things as each release comes out. And it's a relatively new slash small project, um, but I feel like a distribution like this has a lot of great potential. Uh, the GTK toolkit that is used to style uh, the XFCE environment and specifically GTK3 um, that will land fully 
in future versions of, uh, of Enso OS. So GTK3 is a really capable toolkit. It can look amazing when it's themed well. And again, the elementary OS project is a great example of that. But here's, here's the question, and here's what I'd love to explore with you guys a little bit. Um, if you could take different components from different desktop environments to kind of build your ultimate Frankenstein OS, what would it be? Like, on the surface, I would absolutely take the Gala Window Manager. Something about it is so smooth and so clean to me that I, that I love it. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I, I do appreciate a lot of what the Elementary OS team does, but I also do have um, you know, a bit more set in my habits and, uh, and I do like the flexibility that other oh, um, desktop environments such as the KDE Plasma or XFCE, I love the customization and the flexibility that those give you. So for me, the idea of coupling Gala Window Manager with, let's say, um, I don't know, the, the icon set and the GTK theming of Adwaita from the GNOME side of things with, I guess, a bit of uh, power power tools customization from KDE Plasma into one Frankenstein OS. That could be that could be a hot mess is what it could be, but it also could be kind of awesome if, uh, if somebody managed to pull that off. There's nothing absolutely mind blowing about the concept of Enso OS. It is based on Ubuntu, we've seen it a dozen times before, but it's just their combination of those two things has really piqued my interest into what could a truly good looking functional Linux distribution look like? And what's even measuring, like what are we comparing these things to anymore? Windows 10 has some interesting design ideas with Fluent Design. I think that's what they're calling it anyway. Uh, and Mac OS has kind of looked the same for a long time. iOS, uh, yeah, it, it develops very slowly and iteratively. What even is good design anymore? I don't know. I feel like we're just pandering to our own preferences. I know I am. Okay, let me know what you think. This has been a long, rambly, weird kind of video, but I'm really curious. If we could build the ultimate Frankenstein Linux distribution, what would it look like? I think my biggest hopes for this particular project is that it would be fast and functional. Um, and I think it seems like those are its goals. At, at least when you, we have a look at the website, their, uh, their website is all about trying to have green computing. Um, and so being able to have an OS that is, um, that is longer lasting on older hardware and it sort of uh, mitigates that aggressive upgrade cycle that so many people experience with, uh, with software these days. So yeah, go and check it out, faster and more functional. So a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's episode was brought to you by Hostinger. Hostinger is one of the fastest and most affordable web hosting services on the internet. And they've got a range of web hosting services and plans to fit almost any budget and scale. So whether you're looking to expand your online presence, like I will be in the coming months, or whether you're looking for a full-on cloud hosting solution for your business or organization, then Hostinger will be able to help you out. They're focused on bringing the highest quality in web hosting service at the best possible price. And with over 29 million users in 178 countries, they're definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. Their account dashboard is really simple, straightforward, and actually pretty powerful. And you can easily integrate with services like WordPress, and they do also have their own built-in website builder. And if their prices weren't already affordable enough, Check out the link in the description for up to 91% off yearly web hosting plans. So go to hostinger.com slash galactic and make sure to use coupon code galactic at checkout to receive this offer. And thank you once again to Hostinger for sponsoring today's episode. Well, thank you all so much for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and uh, consider subscribing and the bell and stuff if you want to see this stuff on a regular basis. And uh, follow me on Twitter if you're not already at InGalactic. And I will see you all in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.